Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum, far from home. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We do have several different tiers available, make sure you check it out. We also do have a free tier if you're interested. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we've been following Ethereum for quite some time. In fact, the very first video on my channel is, is about the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation, where we identified Ethereum's Bitcoin valuation as being severely undervalued when it was at 0 0.017. Now today, the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation sits, sits quite a bit higher, and so we will touch on that as well. But I want to first by talking about the USD valuation and where it currently sits. So right now, Ethereum is, is sitting just around $1,539. Um, and, you know, if you look at this most recent move to the upside, it's actually not that far away or that dissimilar from this move we saw back in October of 2022. So, so far, it has not yet broken out of that range. But I, I will go back to the thing that I've, I've spoken about before, and that is the idea of it being far from home in the sense that a sustained bull run, in my opinion, and I, I understand this is not making me a popular person, right? Like, I don't need to be reminded, but... My opinion is that a sustained bull market for Ethereum will not occur until Ethereum spends some time at home base, okay? And, you know, I understand that we've sort of been flirting with that level for a while, but to my surprise, in fact, and, and to Ethereum's credit, it has remained much more resilient than I thought it would be. If you actually look at this line, I mean, it's basically just stayed right out, right outside of it. You know, it's almost trending just above the, again, the fair value logarithmic regression line fit to non-bubble data. This idea of fitting it to areas that are not part of a manic bubble phase, but part of an apathetic, the tourists are gone phase, right? So fit it to that phase, fit it to those phases where, you know, all these people have left because that's where you identify, you know, the, the, the true deep value of Ethereum on its USD pair. One of the things I've mentioned before is, of course, there's no guarantees of anything specifically happening. I mean, you guys know my bias in the matter, and it's hard to separate myself sometimes uh, from my bias when I when I look at this stuff. But again, that's why I'm saying, look, I understand that the Ethereum valuation has been remaining quite resilient on its USD pair. And, you know, despite that, I, I still do think that it, it's more likely than not that eventually it's going to go into this lower regression band. Whether that means we go to it or it comes to us, of course, is up for interpretation. I think it's more likely going to eventually break to the downside and, and spend some time down here. But if it does come up to us, it's going to take a long time for it to actually get there. If you look at, say, like the fair value, you know, for it to actually get up to the current price, if we were to just sort of estimate, it would take a long time. You know, you're, you're talking about another two years or so before the fair value would get up to that level. So, you know, while it might be somewhat more attractive for us to just go to the fair value, I would argue it would make it would, it would actually be a lot less painful for us to just sort of come down here, spend some time and then blast off again and create a new mountain within our Ethereum mountain range. So, you know, I'll continue to, to look at this from the perspective of Ethereum is, is still sitting just outside of, of where it of, of where home is for it. And, and just reminding myself that Ethereum typically touches base in this area before we go on another sustained bull run. So far, we have been unable to, to really go on a sustained bull run as, as much as the exciting, as much as the price action might be exciting in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's either been a lower high or in this case, so far, um, a, a similar high. Doesn't mean we can't break up, but even again, I mean, even if it does that, it doesn't mean that this isn't some just big, huge horizontal um, you know, consolidation range for ultimately figuring out which way it wants to go. Now, the more important thing by far, in my opinion, is the Bitcoin valuation of Ethereum. Okay. The reason I say that is because when you navigate crypto, it's always worthwhile to consider what is the risk that you're taking on. And, you know, before I get into the Bitcoin valuation and my thoughts on the Bitcoin valuation, I do want to say a few positive things because I, I I think during you know phases of the market like this it can be misconstrued my macro opinion of ethereum and and where I ultimately think it's going first of all I will say that ethereum in my opinion is considered a blue chip like Bitcoin so I think Bitcoin and ethereum are the blue chips 
furthermore, I I think the I you know there there, there are no such thing as an uh, an ETH killer, right? They don't exist. You know, I mean, there's there's other projects and there's other projects that might do things uh, in certain ways that you know some people might say are better, but I, I still don't think any of them uh, compare you know to to ethereum in, in terms of in terms of where ethereum is and I'm, I'm i'm excluding bitcoin right so bitcoin is its own thing right so bitcoin is its own thing and then if you were to lump in ethereum with all the other altcoins i would say ethereum is is you know by far uh, more more advanced in a lot of different ways but also just you know fundamentally um is I mean, so fundamentally I, I think it's better in a, in a lot of different ways but the other way that i think it's it's better is that it's you know it's stood the test of time right it's been around for a long time it's been around since 2015 and i mean i might that might not sound like that long ago but believe it or not it is 2023 so it was eight years ago right so it's been around almost eight years now and and it's stood the test of time it has been at number two for a long time and I think it's likely going to stay at number two for a long time. OK, so I want to talk a little bit here about the Bitcoin valuation of Ethereum. And, and we'll sort of we'll sort of do a, a recap of what I have previously said. And and, you know, to remind people. So, so I turned bearish on the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation right here. Uh, I felt like a genius for a few weeks. Because like right after I traded the ETH to Bitcoin, um, it sold off. So I felt like a genius, right? And then it just came right back up. So you know, essentially, we've, we've sort of been oscillating around this range. And, and my ultimate opinion, and, and it has been for quite some time, and I even have videos on this you know, at the merge, right, is that the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation is sort of playing out the same thing that, that Bitcoin USD played out back in, in 2021. So you're just having sort of like this one two secondary top right so you have this distribution phase over here you know the the wyckoff distribution just like bitcoin usd it comes down to this area right just like bitcoin usd did in the summer of 2021 pops back up first top second top what does that remind you of you go take a look at at bitcoin usd so let me go ahead and hide the regression line and we'll pull up we'll pull up bitcoin usd again you switch this to the daily time frame and same idea right you have the one two three four right the, the initial sell-off and then that sort of double top that one two punch uh the final distribution and then it just sort of slowly deteriorates from there same thing for ether bitcoin right the one two three four just wyckoff distribution phase that first initial sell off, the one two punch to sort of finalize the secondary distribution phase. And then from there, it's just been more or less a series of mostly lower highs. But uh, you could you could say that this one was actually a higher high. Now, to zoom in here on the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation, you know, there were a couple of trend lines I was I was following, not that they're that important, but um, arguably we've you know, Ethereum's Bitcoin valuation has in fact broken support. Now, does that mean that it goes straight down? Eh, probably not, right? It'll it'll probably bounce around for a little bit. You can see even over here in May, it bounced around for a little bit after having this initial sell-off, and then it bounced around in this area for for weeks before ultimately breaking down much further. Could it also bounce back up and retest the trend line, or or even go even higher? Uh, I don't know if my heart can take it at this point, but. Yeah, anything's possible, right? Anything's possible. But the point is, is you know, it, it really has just been slowly moving down over the course of, you know, basically since September, the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation has been slowly moving down. And I think all of these pumps are just sort of working as a way to get people to just FOMO back in only for only for it to break down once again. The other trend line that I was at least looking at was, you know, it was sort of following this for a little bit, right? Sort of bouncing off here, but now it's fallen below. And one of the things that we've discussed on my channel, of course, is the idea that the dominance of Bitcoin remains in this phase where it's more likely to keep going up. OK, and one of the things that the Bitcoin USD does when it pumps like it has been and the dominance goes higher is it gets some of the other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum off of their support. OK, so, you know, Ethereum was on the support on its Bitcoin pair, but then when it, you get a very strong Bitcoin pump, it can take ETH off of its support against Bitcoin 
And then so that when the next time Bitcoin has a correction, there's nowhere for Ethereum to hide because it already fell off its support. So the main level that you might look to to provide support, it's no longer there because we already fell below it. Now, arguably, a diagonal support is, is not really much of a great support. I think a lot of people would probably agree with that. You might look more towards you know, sort of horizontal support areas. So perhaps the 0.065 area is going to be a potential area of interest and, and, a, and a spot where Bitcoin might see some short-term relief. But one of the things I wanna do is provide some perspective on, on sort of a, maybe a macro outlook for the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. So one way to potentially view this, and there's two ways, right? I think there's two ways to really view the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation that have the most credibility. Okay, now there's gonna be a thousand different ways you can view it, but I think there's two main credible ways to view it. The first way is a more is the more optimistic way in my, well, I guess you could argue the, th the third way, the most optimistic way is that this never breaks down and this is just a consolidation phase before breaking back up. I don't think that's the most likely outcome. So I'm gonna talk about the two other most, you know, the, the most likely outcomes. The more optimistic outcome for me for the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation would be a path that looks something like this. So where it comes back down, maybe by March to this lower range down here, back down to you know 0.05, it perhaps bounces back up in the April and May timeframe, um, and then and then sort of sells off going into the summer. Historically, Ethereum doesn't really have great summer returns although that's not true for every single summer, and then perhaps comes back down to this region, this, and then, and then perhaps building out a strong base down here, and then, and then sort of coming back up and, and working its way back up to new local highs. This would be a potential outcome that I think has some credibility. And, and one way to view this, and, it, and it's not that dissimilar from, you know, from say like the Ether USD pair. If you think about the Ether USD pair, we have this logarithmic regression band, again, fit to quote unquote non-bubble data, where it returns home before a new bull market can begin. Okay, so let's suppose that Ethereum's Bitcoin valuation is the same thing, right? Again, is it dubious? Yeah, but again, that, that fits in perfectly with the content of the channel. So let's just imagine for a moment that the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation is on some you know trajectory like this where it you know rather than rather than being an oscillator it is a it's on a sort of like this logarithmic regression trend line where it occasionally returns to home base before starting another bull run if that's the case then you could see it return back down to the point you know 0 0.03 0 0.04 level for some time only to begin another bull run where it actually takes another stab at, at taking out these, you know, these local highs. And, and, you know, one way to view that would be something like this, right, where you have this, let me delete all this stuff so we can see this a little bit better, where you might have some massive move. Um, and, and I mean, you know, if you sort of, you'd have to sort of ignore these two peaks over here, but if you were to look at it like this, right? So if you look at it like this, then you could argue that, okay, well, there is still some room to do this, to bounce back up, maybe it come back down here to these lower levels to bounce around, and then to maybe, you know, come back up here by 2020, late 2024, or maybe like early 2025, where you get another, you know, um, Ethereum tsunami in, in early 2025, something like that, like, you know, something like we had back over here, but we, we build off of a stronger base, right? So to me, that would be the more optimistic view, okay? And it, it would also potentially correspond to, you know, being four years later after this sort of September low. So this September low again is, is the August, September is again, it's the first video on my channel. And it was where we identified the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation as being severely undervalued. If something like that were to happen, say, you know, this Q3 or something, it could be a, 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 rep, a repeat of history. This would be, I think, the, the more optimistic view. It's not the most optimistic view because the most optimistic view would just be someone that says, you know, you know, Ben is, is wrong about, uh, about it breaking down and perhaps this is just a consolidation phase before it breaks higher. So of course, the most optimistic view is that we don't go down and we just go straight up. I don't think that's the most likely outcome 
Therefore, I don't put a lot of, a lot of you know, weight behind that idea uh, with regards to my own portfolio. But again, I'm not, I'm not you. You can do, you're free to do whatever you want. This is not financial advice. So this is what I would consider to be the more optimistic scenario. The more pessimistic scenario uh, is, to, to, is to assume that Ethereum is an oscillator against Bitcoin. So an oscillator would look something like this, where it comes up to this range, but it also ha sort of ha comes back down to the bottom part of the range as well. So this is what an oscillator would look like, okay? And there's plenty of altcoins that look, that have this pattern against Bitcoin. They have, they're, they're, they're an oscillator. Now, some of them just bleed over the macro scale, just like a lot of altcoins bleed against Ethereum, right? Plenty of altcoins bleed against Ethereum over the macro scale. I even have a full dedicated video and a dedicated page on my website for, it's called, does it bleed, right? And you can see, does, does this bleed against Ethereum? Because a lot of cryptocurrencies do, but a lot of cryptocurrencies also bleed against Bitcoin. And so there is always a chance that Ethereum's Bitcoin valuation is an oscillator rather than on a, on a slowly rising logarithmic regression channel, okay? If you wanna know my honest opinion, okay? If I were just, to, if, you, if you press me and said, well, if you had to pick one, what do you think? I think, my, my personal opinion is that it's highly unlikely that Ethereum will return to, you know, 0.017. Like, I don't think it's likely that it's going to come back down to these levels. It could, right? I mean, I, I, would, I would say that, it, that, that that is a possibility if, if things get really bad, but I don't consider it to be the most likely outcome. I think the most likely outcome is something, again, more like this, where it is, it's sort of just on this long, um, logarithmic regression trend line so that each time you visit it, the base is just a little bit higher, right? So originally it was at like 0 0.002 and then it was at 0 0.008 and then it was at 0 0.017 and maybe the next time it'll be at like 0 0.035 or 0 0.0375 or 0 0.04, something like that. I think that is the more likely outcome um, than, you know, than, than it being an oscillator. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that Ethereum is going to flip Bitcoin, but I mean it, it could mean that it at least gets another another stab at, at some of these higher Ether Bitcoin valuations, right? You know, maybe maybe we can get to point one in in 2025 or something. Um, but that's my general view on on the Ethereum on the Ethereum valuation. Uh, you know, I I know I know this opinion has not has not made a lot of fans, but. Uh, I, I do want to just be honest about what I what I see in the market, and you know what? I get things wrong sometimes. Been wrong plenty of times. The dominance of Bitcoin is taking is taking a lot longer than I thought it was going to to go up. It is finally going up now. I mean, it's at 44%, going on 45%, and I think it will likely continue running higher. Um, and I, I think that the altcoin market as as a whole is likely going to continue bleeding against Bitcoin. And once you see the Bitcoin dominance like well above 50% then you can at least have the discussion, I think, as to, you know, are things going to stop bleeding against Bitcoin? But until that time, I, I still think that, that Bitcoin is, is going to continue to reign supreme for a while and, um, and, and still take valuations from the altcoin market. Not that I, I don't really consider Ethereum an altcoin, but one of the things you'll notice is that a lot of, a lot of altcoins have just been slowly bleeding back to Bitcoin. Like if you look at their, their Bitcoin pairs, it's, it's, it's these altcoins losing a couple percent every single day, basically, to Bitcoin that can help fuel Bitcoin's rally and keep it more elevated than the altcoin market during a phase right now. And if Bitcoin were to pump up tomorrow, you'll likely see the dominance go up. But the other thing is if Bitcoin drops tomorrow, you'll likely see the dominance go up. And, and I, I think that's really, you can see here just where the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation is. It's still so high, I would argue it has so much room to, to sort of give back some gains here, consolidate for a while, right? Consolidate down here for a while and then try again after we get out of, of all these macro headwinds that we currently face. So that's my opinion on the Ethereum USD valuation and the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, give the video a thumbs up. Check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.